Sorry about the way the... Uh, I was upstairs shaving. You were saying? Whoa, 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 wait, hold on a second. You just left the shave? Right when I'm going to tell you my big important story? Jesus Christ, kid, you at least be a little patient for me. Alright, first things first, let me just take off this filter. Okay, now. I'm not used to speaking in this voice, but let me just say this. Somebody once told me that if you work hard on a dream, and if you put your heart into it, you can really make that dream into a reality. Joji told me that when he recruited me into the Order. He was interested in my project, a viewer into other dimensions across space and time. I of course took the offer, I mean, why not? It was my dream ever since I was a kid, reading all those books of H.P. Lovecraft and all those other tales of the bizarre and the strange, always wondering what it would be like to see those different dimensions. And besides, someone was finally taking my job seriously. But what happens when that passion becomes an obsession? What happens when the dream becomes a nightmare? The night of the first trial, I saw it. Death, destruction, despair, annihilation, and in the middle of it, a false deity stood tall, looking at it all with that fucking smile on its face. The G Savior it was terrifying, monstrous. He would sort of be the one thing that can scare Cthulhu or the great Asagoth into submission. I, 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 I should have known it would have happened. I should have known. I tried to tell them. I tried. The, those damn idiots in the order. That fucking idiot Joji. Blindly refusing to comply to my suggestions. Blind to realize that their dream would soon become that nightmare. When I tried speaking my mind, when I tried to warn them of their mistake, they locked me away. They simply refused to believe it, saw me as some raving lunatic. All for the sake of their dream. And now, this thing is loose. And you wanna know what the worst part of it is? Nobody can stop this. The end is nigh. Destruction, chaos is inevitable. And all of this because of one man's dream, because of all of their dreams. The harbinger of destruction was the result of a corrupted dream. That's when we should have known. That's when he should have known that some dreams are better off dreams. Shit. What was that? It seems we got company. Don't worry, I'll be right back, Jorge. Just, just watch this until I get back. Hello and welcome to Mega Anime Reviews. The last three videos, I've been looking at the various ways an anime can suck. MD Geist is virtually brainless with little to no substance. Blue Gender attempted to have substance, but had terrible story choices that ruined the whole thing. And Pilot Candidate is just a cliched and unfinished awful mess from start to finish. And thus, to finish off November, we're gonna take a look at Volrav the Liberator. It's another mecha series produced by Sunrise, with the director this time around being Ko Matsu, who's also worked on such animes as Red Garden and Kurenai, with serious composition and script supervision by Ichiro Okochi, who is also responsible for Code Geass and Guilty Crown. It aired on April 12, 2013, finishing its run on October 10. 
Unlike the previous shows I've covered, this one doesn't have an English dub yet, though I've seen people try to do a fan dub of it. Anyway, what's the story? It is the year TC-71 of the True Calendar. 70% of mankind now lives in space, in giant orbiting colonies called Dyson Spheres. Two major powers emerged, the Dorsian Military Federation and Ares, the Atlantic Ring United States. They are engaged in a war, while neutral colonies such as Geor live in peace. Damn, I knew I used up my Gundam joke too early. So anyone who's genre savvy knows exactly where this is going. The Dorsian's Attack Module 77 of Gior, high school student Haruto finds an experimental prototype mobile suit, he gets onto it and repels the invaders, and then he gets stabbed to death by one of the soldiers, and then he gets back up and bites his would-be murderer, then they switch bodies, and then the remaining high school students of Module 77 declare their independence from the other nations? And Haruto is a vampire? I'll be honest, I, I didn't see any of that coming. The animation is pretty good. It flows well, it looks crisp and vibrant, and generally holds together well. The music is alright, not especially great, but it does its job well, fitting in with the scenes. The voice acting is pretty good too. The seiyus do solid performances even with the material they are given. Even when the anime is at its most ridiculous, they're still giving it their all. I'll start the review by saying this anime is nowhere near as bad as the other shows I mentioned in the beginning. Unlike MD Geist, there was effort. Unlike Blue Gender, there was consistency. Unlike Pilot Candidate, there was an actual attempt at a story. First, the good stuff. The characters, while not the most interesting or memorable, and they generally remain underdeveloped, they are likable and honestly it's hard to hate them. Well, most of them anyway. The pacing is mostly solid, with a few exceptions. The mecha designs are great, they're unique in appearance and look very badass. The fight scenes between the mechas aren't the greatest, but they are generally done well. I'll admit, I kinda liked how the characters use the internet to post what's going on and gain support for the module. I think it's a clever idea and it's useful right here. And there are some dramatic scenes that I felt actually kinda worked. However, like always, there are problems. Lots and lots of problems. The plot, despite containing the presence of space vampires, it's very predictable and cliché. It's the Code Gia story, with the fight for independence against an empire, supernatural abilities bestowed upon our hero, taking place in a high school setting, an excellent strategist capable of predicting everything, etc. The only major difference is that the Suzaku SP is the protagonist this time around, while the Lelouch SP remains mostly on the sidelines. It pulls twist after twist after twist without consideration of previous events, and as the series goes on it becomes very nonsensical. The drama isn't all that good either, often feeling very forced, contrived, and far too overplayed. Like for example, take a look at Haruto's need to keep his vampirism a secret from Shoko. He says it's because he's no longer human, and he's afraid he'll hurt her because of these random attack spasms he has. If he were a regular vampire, this would be reasonable angst, but the reason it isn't is because in this series, vampires don't actually suck blood or turn other people into vampires. Instead, they transfer bodies. The worst thing Haruto could have done was switch bodies with Shoko, which he can instantly undo by biting back on his own body. So really, there was no reason to keep it a secret and it makes him look like a gigantic emo for doing so. Some characters are extremely annoying, like Saki for being generally an annoying prick obsessed with glory to the point of taking over Haruto's body to further her fame. However, as much as I dislike her, even I felt what happened to her in episode 10 was just horrible. It came completely out of nowhere and had no reason to be there other than to shock the viewer. It was tasteless and it's the subject of one of the nastiest memes I've ever heard in my life. Well, it never gets to that level ever again. The whole anime is filled to the brim with stupid moments and idiotic plotting to the point where it becomes very unintentionally hilarious and campy. I think that's the thing about Volvrav, it's very campy. How much you enjoy the anime will depend on how much camp you can take. I admit, as much as I dislike this show, I can't bring myself to hate it. Episode 10 aside, it's nowhere near as offensively bad as Pilot Candidate or MD Geist. And depending on what kind of mood you are, you might find some enjoyment 
and how absurd it all is. Oh well, see you next time on the next Mega Anime Reviews. <sighs> alright, alright. It appears my time is short. They're closing in. Sanchez, I... I'm sorry, I... I didn't realize... Look, kid. Don't blame yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. However, there is something I need to ask you. What is it? Alright. Do you remember what you were doing before the G-Savior first appeared? Why are you asking that? Please, just answer the question. This is important. Okay, okay. Uh, I was pulling a prank on Juan using a box and... Can you remember anything further back? No. Can't remember anything? Don't you think there's something suspicious in that? What does this have to do with- Why can't you remember anything before that, Jorge? What does that say about you and your existence? What the fuck? Shit! Don't trust anyone. Sanchez! Sanchez might come back at some point. When he does, let me know. Understood. <laughs>